is the team check-in with the Camelot Kings, Variety, Yark, Genetics. All join me. Uh, fresh off a world championship run here, fellas. Yeah, that's right. Round of applause for the for the gang. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna dive um, a bit deeper into that because I don't I don't think we've sat down with you guys and really talked about your world's run yet from from season nine. So before we look forward to season ten, uh, let's talk a, a bit about that. Would you guys, I mean, there have been some dominant world's runs in, in Smite history. You don't drop a single game, all tournament long. Where do you rank your performance, Season 9 Worlds, on, on a dominance list? Do you think it was the most convincing world championship run we've ever seen? Uh, I'd say so. I feel like you have to say so. If you didn't lose a single game, obviously there was games that were kind of close to sure. losing, but... I feel like the way we were playing that world was just very calm and collected. We never felt that we were going to lose or like out of any game. We just waited for the perfect opportunity because nine times out of ten, no team like loses the game up cleanly. There's always like one or two mistakes, and it just depends on how you capitalize them. I think the most clear one is probably <clears throat> Bolts game three? three. Yeah, game three, where we're a little bit behind in every role, and yep. they try to force a siege in mid tower. tier one and. We all collapsed on it. We all like read the play well, and you know we they kind of threw. And we just came back from there. So, yeah, I think it was probably the most dominant run. You know, and I'm I'm curious about this. But is is that a type of feeling that you guys get on when did we start Friday? It was what quarterfinals, right? So is that a feeling you get on quarterfinals Friday? Who you guys you played Ravens, the Ravens in yeah. quarters? Could you just tell there was something? different about the team that weekend is that is that a feeling that you can get really early on or did that have to build up over the course of uh each round i feel like it i feel like it built, built up a bit love yeah i think for every team i think if, you, if everyone watches the first quarterfinals of every setback i think you can go and watch all four quarterfinals and kind of see the games are kind of slow or like i think it just comes down to nerves really i think people right. are just nervous obviously it's the first game it's a best of three no one really wants to go out in the Funky first round. Stuff happens so, in best of yeah. threes, right? Actually, the, on the stage well, was my first time playing on a stage. Yeah, what was that experience so that like? Was, that was crazy. That was really crazy. I was worried I was going to play bad. I was more <laughs> worried I was going to play bad on the stage, but it was the same. Yeah, and you know what? I think I, the the fans deserve a lot of credit because obviously there was a lot of rallying around making that event happen. Uh, kind of mid year, it happens, and you know, at Worlds of Past and really any other esport event, it's like Friday at ten a.m. Or like quarterfinal number one, it's it's understandable if it takes a little while for the venue to fill up and you know mm -hmm. people get there midday. But no, we had to like delay broadcast by thirty or forty five minutes or something just to get everyone in. Yeah, uh, and so the fans were there and 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 they were excited to watch the run that you guys went on. Um, in production, whenever you're ready, we're gonna I'm I'm gonna transition to that video here in in just a moment. But I think one of the <laughs> one of the the funny things after the fact is the reaction. After Yark, you look bored. <laughs> Genetics, you're confused as to what's going on. So this is after game one. At the end of game two, we're doing the same thing. Yark, you're still bored. <laughs> Genetics, you're still confused. Um, and then I think ultimately there's there's a feeling of... That was finals, right? Uh, yeah. yeah, this is finals. So that was after game two of finals. Um, clearly the Titans reeling a bit. Um, and then I think we'll have we'll have game three reaction here in, in just a moment. <laughs> you're like you're like yeah I guess it is what it is type of uh, type of thing. Uh, and then this is when you guys ultimately win. And obviously that's like where, where the emotion can kind of shed off and, and you can really experience that moment. Um, yeah. Yark, was it truly as as boring as your uh, <laughs> as your mannerisms led on? Did, did you was that a this is easier than I thought it would be type of uh, reaction from you? Uh, I think like last year, I think something that I probably learned from Steven is that you all have to like keep composure until mm -hmm. the end. Because I remember last year's semifinals, we were like two up against the Kings and we probably almost lost that set because we literally like started like getting like too emotional about it. <laughs> so I'm just trying to, I don't know, to chill, to think about what happened yeah. and then then you just take it one game at a time. It is. It is. I don't know. I I I did like a commentary review the the week after Worlds on my stream just to listen back to my stuff, and I I kept pausing and dying on on your guys's post game reactions. Um, genetics, obviously, a, a passionate player in in those moments. Um, 
if you will, dissect the the reaction there. Is, is, were, were you expecting a bit more from the other squad and, and you're kind of letting them know? Yeah, it was easy. I don't know. <laughs> um, I, don't know. I, I kind of feel sad looking back on it a little bit because I wish I would have sure. celebrated more after winning. Um, well, you, hey, you're, you're in with the boys. Yeah, I don't know. I, I was... I had like a lot of thoughts so I was focusing on a lot okay. of things but it was very easy I did think we were going to win Worlds from the from the, the first match after Ravens because I just right. thought we couldn't lose drafts like our drafts like I literally against every team I mean we had a plan we just said we banned these two gods and we can't lose a draft no matter no matter which way it went yeah. it felt we couldn't lose a draft the only draft we lost was against Bolts game 3 when I wanted to pick Yamoja for fun and that, and that was that was turbulent but I it was just easy right um, and honestly it's just funny in front of a crowd just to shit talk people yeah of course um, it adds to the story a bit yeah. right I mean I posted it there's a tweet after we won because obviously you celebrate there's a tweet where I was like insinuating I was doing something to a Titans sign right and um, I deleted the tweet as soon as I posted it I was thinking nah, I can't post that and the internet went out so it didn't accept my delete so the tweet went out anyway perfect but, <laughs> but Twitter I've just come off topic completely. There's just there's so much, so many like emotions come up. Yeah. Like, so many thoughts come up when you do that. But yeah, it, it was fun. It's also fun for the crowd to like see people like hyping up. Of stuff. course. I loved. That. I mean, I was in the crowd loads. I was watching loads of games with fans and stuff. And right. even I couldn't see. I loved the the crowd reactions. Um, like objectives, just picks, picks and bands where people start celebrating over picks too. It's just, it's just great. It's like I, I definitely want to go and see more events in the future, even if it's not for Smile, like other games. Like yep. I would love it. Well, that's what. Um... That's ultimately what reeled me into to casting as a guy who was doing Paladins at the time brought me out to season five. That's when Splice won, right? Season five, yeah. Smite yep. Worlds. Yeah. And it was just like nothing like I've ever experienced before and it like completely convinced me. Um, Twig didn't join us here today. Um, what was your read on, on that moment though for Twig, a player who's been to every Smite Worlds, come so close so many times. I love the the visual of him, you know, you guys telling him to go get the hammer and, and yeah. just lift it up. Um, if you can, if anyone has a read, um, how do you feel like Twig was in, in that moment where he finally got it done? I think when we were ending game three, in the I literally yeah. took my headset off and started celebrating before we even killed the fight. <laughs> you were like a stealer. And then I, just, I, just, I could just like hear, grab my headset off, I could still hear Ben. And he's just like, the game's not over, guys, the game's not over. Even though <laughs> like, the, the game's it, right? clearly over, but like, right. he's just, he just took, as soon as the uh, Titan died, he just took his head off and I don't know, you can see by his celebration that yeah. it must have been like a big relief for him to, you know, yep. finally overcome this dreaded the just, finals curse. Yeah. And, it's, get the hammer. I think it's one of the best, like still images we we have in years of Smite is is because of the story him him on yeah. stage lifting the hammer the the crowd behind him um, it's just such an incredible run and and you, you talk genetics about crowd reaction things like that I think there was some concern about genetics reaction in the months after Worlds only and, and I say that jokingly because you win Worlds MVP and so much conversation around genetics is ego. Have you felt the, the ego inflate? Are you are you unbearable to the rest of the kings now? I mean, it's for them to say, I guess. I mean, <laughs> I've probably been worse this year than last year just because we're losing every scrim, but right. I don't think so. Um, I've only mentioned the fact that I'm world champion like in like maybe, maybe like hundred times, right? Maybe, once or no, twice no, in, a uh, day. in ranked games, like maybe like ten times. Um, <laughs> do you have the title yet? I don't know how that was do the that. first thing I wanted. Right. Yeah. Yeah, next yeah. year when we win again, I want to get. I want on my Smurf account. I want PMR to have. World that's champion right. as well. Um, <laughs> that's just that's just putting a name for the works. Right. Uh, I don't know. I didn't. I already had an ego. I already thought it was really good, regardless of if we won or lost Worlds. I thought I played the best support game players I've ever been played at Worlds, regardless if we won as a team. It was dominating. Um, which is very selfish to say. Obviously, the team played. Everyone was the best in their roles, but yep. I already thought that. So I think it's like uh, the justification for me having that ego didn't really matter because as sure. long as I believe it then I don't know why I'd care about anyone else sure thinks. you know it's, it's, I think there's largely a lot of, of joking around it was a game th was a game three of finals did they give you Maui again uh, yeah yeah which I think you know as casters I, I've now casted two finals um, and they've both been three O's and I'm like begging for just one to go longer than three yeah. but the moment in picks and bands I remember Mifflin and I were up there casting with one another and we saw Maui get locked in we're like bro they're just this has got to be it. Was there a moment in the finals? I, I know that you guys have already talked about, you know, job's not done type of mentality until that final Titan drops, anything can happen. Uh, was there a moment on finals day, though, you could, you could sort of tell that 
it was it was going your way on that day you, you would maybe outclass the the titans uh, i think i started in the very first draft i can't exactly remember what it was but they banned both holders. yeah we were we were perfectly fine with trading hunters well back then the meta was if you get ishtar kern you put one of them in mid and you play the other one adc mm -hmm. which we were fine to trade that for and then game one they just banned both of them to deny both teams that top adc at that, in that meta yeah. So as soon as that happened, and the draft played out, we kind of read them pretty well in terms of draft. And then as soon as the draft was done, and I killed Sot in lane, I think I just we probably just knew that the game that the yeah. set just over. It, that felt like one that just sort of got out of control. You know, it, it, that one obviously games can snowball. That felt like a set that just the best of three that just kind of snowballed out of control. Um, and so obviously a convincing win for you guys, and and one of the, the coolest moments in Smite Esports that we've gotten in the last few years. Got, got back to Worlds and um, got the fans there, and, and I think that was really important. Moving forward to Season 10, though, I'm sure you took some time to, to soak it in and, and really enjoy um, the victory and, and taking it for what it was. Uh, between the three of you, was there ever a moment, though, where you considered that that was, that was it for you? And, and you, you had won Worlds again, and you were ready to, to hang up the mouse and, and move on to other things, or did everyone feel uh, like you wanted to give it another go here in Season 10? I think everyone wanted to give it a go, but Jordan, big man, I think he was a bit on the fence about playing again. Did, he, did that require some convincing from the, from the boys, or uh, uh, he just had to sit and think about it for a bit? Him. Not really. <laughs> yeah, we, wanted, we, we <laughs> told him to quit. Please go. <laughs> Jordan, that was your best performance ever. You might as well just, just quit now. Just leave now. <laughs> nah, uh, I don't think any of us really tried to beg him or convince him. We just basically told him, if you want to quit, you can quit. Well, it's fine. Right. Yeah. No, of course. And I, I think you guys have, have all gotten really close. And, you know, going on a run like that, you have to, to, to be really close as a team. Um, I've joked in, in some of these other interviews we did this week with the after party and how like wheeling and dealing with teams next year kind of starts happening. I don't know how much of that is like actual serious stuff that ends up sticking. Um, were there any after party moments for any of you guys where, you know, roster talks, things like that, uh, you know, started to bubble up a bit? Was it always something where you knew you wanted to run it back as a, as a five stack? Um, or did that take some time to come into, come into shape? Uh, I don't remember now. I think I was so drunk. <laughs> that you should, I right? I, just care. I can't be asked to talk business. Uh, at the half party, not really. I was kind of just enjoying myself, sure. you know, yeah. friends and stuff. But I think we already kind of knew that yeah. we'd most likely run it back after we won, like before the after party and all that stuff. Kind Are there any rumblings around Twig? Not necessarily at the after party. I feel like, and I hope this is nothing that's catching anyone off guard. The jungle conversation is something that had been talked about. Um, or would you feel like as a as a group of five, you come home, you decompress? Was it pretty clear in the early days of roster talk that this team was going to stick together? Not really. Obviously, there was the whole Jordan that might quit. And yeah, then right. from Mo Bay, when Twig and Ataraxia team together, Ataraxia always told everyone on that team to, um, you know, it's a business. Win or lose, explore your options. Yeah. Um, yeah, a little closer on the, on the oh, boy there. Sorry. No, you're fine. But I thought I'd just sit closer. Whichever you want. Sit closer. Whatever's more more comfy for you. Yeah, he was saying, um, win or lose, explore your options. So that's what Ben's done every single year now. Yep. You know, no like no hard feelings. Like it's just it's just what he wants to do. So obviously he had a few offers. So we were like, well, we might as well speak to other players as well. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they won't mind me mentioning, but we spoke to Lasper mainly about joining just in case, or if we wanted to replace Ben or whatever. And then after that, we spoke as a team again. And we were like, nah, just, just run it back. Well, you got the easiest convincing argument, right? You just, you went, what is it, eight and no. Best of, so three, three, yeah, eight and no at Worlds, yeah. right? I mean, you got about the, the most convincing argument you need. Um, Yark, you've now won Worlds as solo. You've won Worlds as AD carry. You've, you've played in... Uh, support at points throughout the SPL. Was there ever consideration of a role change for you coming into season 10 or, or <laughs> were you feeling solidified and, and with this team and happy with where you were? Uh, I'm not really. Like every single time that I have to like change my role is it's not even on me. Like, for example, <laughs> the first year when we have like the Julio thing, mm -hmm. 
that he got in trouble or whatever, and then I have to find a player. I think the best solution that we could find is me going back to this role and then bring Steven in. Then, like, next year, yeah, I got, like, kick. Then I have to find a place. Then the only play that I really, like, I look for it was, like, just maybe try to play support and see what happens. Right. How do you <laughs> How do you mentally look back on season nine and really think about it? that for yourself because it had to have been a whirlwind yeah, right I mean you, you win worlds change teams two or three times you're changing roles and then by the end of season nine you're winning worlds again was that a mentally testing year for yeah. you as a player yeah my team last year was uh I think I grow a lot as mm-hmm. a player as a person I learned how to like work with like different people I literally team with the same with boys for maybe four or five years so I just like get used to do work with people like that. But then when you come to a different environment, everything is just different. It doesn't work the same way that it does when you are different players, just different person, different personalities, mm-hmm. and things like that. So I think I like every time I'm just adapt and I just try to do the best of myself for them, yep. for us as a team. So in in genetics, you had this guy join your duo lane last year. Um, what do you think works so well? With, with you and, and Yark and Lane, it felt like you guys were able to build up that synergy pretty quickly. Maybe the most dominant duo lane at that world championship. Um, do your play styles just make sense together? Uh, I think the thing that we wanted from Yark, which is the reason why, uh, first off my idea to pick up Yark, I just wanna put that one out there. <laughs> After we went once, I did say, you go on. I'm just when I was drunk, I think I went to everyone, I went, you're welcome and you're welcome. And I went around in a circle. That's right. Just because we picked up Yark, so I was like, it's my idea. <laughs> not, that, not it wasn't Yark that won as well, it was my idea. That's right, that that's a joke. good way of looking at it. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, so the, the, I think I said it before in an interview made, but, I, but Yark, because he's won before and he's got a lot of tenure, you want like a cold player that doesn't get emotional and has a very like, very stable, consistent, shot calling and uh, player ability. Yep. And I was kind of very, uh, I'm a bit wild sometimes. I've lost a lot of games. Uh, there was a game against Dragons where I just, we just did a random fire gen. I just called the burst it for no reason. And we lost the game off of it. And it's just like, there was no reason to do that. And at Yark, uh, Yark for Worlds specifically, specifically for that was just good at just keeping us focused on what we needed to do rather than what we could do. Right. Um, so that kind of hot and cold thing, kind of even each other out, I thought was really good. Um, that's why I think me and Yark work well together. Well, like, and now you now you got a world championship and yeah. and a, and uh, another year to to build up some of that synergy. And I think that's worth talking about now as we move into season ten. Um, we've shown the caster predictions a good bit and and how <laughs> wrong they were in the sense that a lot of us did not foresee the the Oni Warriors dominance. That said, you know this is it's tournament one, right? It's kickoff tournament. You're really playing for. Um, seeding and just kind of picking the groups back and forth. Um, so the only Warriors, I think, surprised us a bit. If you guys look back at that kickoff tournament, what do you think worked so well for that only Warrior squad? And do you think it's something that you foresee lasting all of, of season 10? Or is this a, we're in the Wild West right now, and that's the type of roster that can work in the type of meta we're in? I think we're just in the Wild West a bit. I yeah. think... Obviously, you can't really deny that the Warriors have five mechanical, really good players in their roles. And I think what they did well that tournament was they, maybe you could call it a bit disrespect, but I'd say they didn't back down to any challenge. Whether if, if it was a 1v1 in ADC, if it was a 3v3 skirmish around Pyromancer, if it was, you know, just solo invading somewhere, they kind of just did what they thought was correct in the moment and they just mechanically played them really well and yep. I think that kind of showed in the performances because the games were a bit bloody but you know they never really seen that they were, they were out of games right so I think maybe it's the meta maybe it's just how season 10 will be but yeah I think they just showed disrespect in a, in a good way sure to like you know just prove themselves and play well yeah look and it's it's a fun I think play style for, for a lot of viewers to watch and um, really fast pace games of smite and i think the conversation around the kings then moving into season 10 is obviously the roster sticks together you 8-0 at worlds um i think the the community truly feeling the only thing that could hold this team back is if the meta shifts away from what worked so well 
during the end of, of season nine and during that world's run. Um, the meta as it is now, the meta as it could be in, in coming weeks. Uh, concern is maybe a bit dramatic, but is that something that's on the mind of this Kings team? Or do you feel like you're able to play the game that you want to play in the current state that uh, that Smite's in? Uh, I think we're completely fine. Um, we yeah. should we should have been 2-2 against Warriors. We had through a game. We had Fire Giant twice. We didn't do anything with it. Um, there's no objective on the map compared to last year. We're the second best team right now. By far, in my opinion, Warriors are up here. We're up here and then everyone else is down in the ground. In my opinion, if we're playing <laughs> properly um, on game day. Um, I think Warriors will be the best team for a while. I think they'll be a lot, a lot, a lot longer than people think. Yep. Um, especially after winning two, it gives a lot of confidence. I think unless we are playing 95% as well as we can play, we won't beat them either. Yep. Um, I just think that, that they're just pretty good right now. Uh, but, I mean, we were second best. We should have gone 2-2 against them, and there's no objectives. So it's not even our play style or our meta. Right. I think f me and Harry, like, I am a big Guardian player. Harry's a big Warrior player. Harry's the best warrior slash guardian player in solo. Maybe he maybe people people always say he can't play like assassins and mages as good as like Sot, for example. So if the meta's not around that, then it's not it's not this meta is not in our favor. Right. There's no objectives, it's not a true tank meta. Um just at that one part of the game. So I'm always still second. So yep. eventually the time to kill is gonna change. Time to kill is gonna change to the point where I'm not getting credit for four hundred and all the game. <laughs> um hopefully. Yeah, we hope. Um, um but, I mean, I think we're fine. It just, for me, it's just complacency, right? That's that's the biggest thing. I don't care about the meta. We're all five good players. We've got a coach behind us that helps us focus on right. to improve on. It's just the complacency. I think it was also just the first like big tournament back since sure. what, what was it? Like a two month break. Yeah, so, two or three yeah. months. Yeah. Well, yeah, we also do have the least ranked games combined as a team. <clears throat> that is also one thing. We no have one's on the ranked grind in the Kings household. Me. I am. I am not. Yeah. I think it's just me. I think I was the only solo to not play ranked after season 10 came out. Which is fine. Well, I mean, you, 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 especially after you win, it's like, it's like a big emotional thing where you've got like a big high of dopamine and like to recover yeah, from wait. that. Yeah. You are on the ranked grind, but you're on the, you're on the A to Z. I was, yeah. Have you done it? Did you do A to Z? No, um, I did it. To, I did it to, to Ishtar on my YouTube broke, so I didn't do it anymore. <laughs> You, wait, so you got the Ishtar. That's like, what? Yeah. Is that like halfway down? Oh, pretty much halfway, I think, yeah. Goodness. But it's like fine. Like, I mean, we've just played a quarter of the ranked games as a team compared to every other team in the league. So, like, I expect us to do worse individually right. across the board, even. I mean, especially after the Worlds as well. Like, I'm not trying. I, I'm not as good as I was, you know, two months ago. Uh, with not as much to prove. Not that it won't happen. Not that it's not like on purpose, but. Um, not as much on the line, yeah. right? Yeah. But it's harder I mean, to, to dial in. Fully for something. Yeah, we, like I mean, yeah. we we weren't happy about losing. I them. think people yeah. also underestimate a bit. You can people obviously everyone memes about if you're streaming or working, it's not really. But that's, even though you're just playing a game for a living, like every like a lot of players do like get burnt out on the game. Oh, yeah. So I think it's really important to just, <clears throat> just take your time. Just not slam rank for three months before yeah. SPL starts. It happened to Bolt every year. They would always dominate the first split and they just burn out and they just never do it at tournaments. Well, it's what I mean. Anything that you enjoy, once it becomes something that you're doing all the time and for money, it you know becomes yeah. a job of one way or another. And you can love competing, but when when you're when you're streaming ranked or you're just playing ranked, and then you got scrim blocks, and then you got to go into studio to play. I mean, you play a lot of Smite, and so I think pacing yourself is is important, yeah. um, especially over the course of of a long year. Um, Yark, we've we've now seen one massive change kind of mid season here with you know all the big healer changes like 70 something gods get tweaked and sort of the update structure around smite this year is we're going to have these big you know seasons so we're, we're i don't know what's going to change but i'm assuming there's going to be two or three um other big changes around smite and, and the way the game is played at these these different season marks in year 10 um talking about adaptations being flexible with metas things like that how do you rank uh, yourself and, and maybe the squad on your ability to get flexible with potentially a few big changes over the course of the year? I think, at least myself, I'm really good at adapting. Mm -hmm. just, you know, I'm just the type of player that can play anything that people ask me to. So if someone thinks like this god is good in this scenario, I would always give it a try. I think I'm really good at, at laning. Just with time. Yeah, play solo ADC. So <laughs> that's right. Yeah, 
Uh, and as a teen, I think we're really good at that. I think uh, we talk about it a lot. Like we always like give recommendations to each other. If Harvey sees something that is good that he probably thinks that I should try, I will give it a try. And same goes to like, like uh, Captain Twig, like BMT, yep. like. We just always try to like communicate each other when we think is good or what we feel like it could be like maybe a surprise for other teams that maybe there is like one god or two gods or three gods that no one is playing, but we can see the potential. We I think we are a team not afraid to actually give it a try and see yep. what we can do with that. So what were well, I don't wanna spoil your scrims. You guys were talking out in the the lounge area out there. You were you were saying that you're you're what more aggressive in scrims yeah. to try to give the rest of your team the ability to like play from behind or something like that? As you're, you know, you're you're trying new things to to force the boys to yeah, something like that. That's <laughs> maybe more like an excuse, just me being bad and you can't no, solo. never. Yeah, it is. No, never. <laughs> just being honest here, you know. No, you got wor- you got world's <laughs> MVP a year ago. You're yeah, you're I mean. world champ now, <laughs> the second time. No, nah, none of that. Um, variety, you know, with with so many changes around the league and if i'm remembering correctly you're the only team that stays exactly the same from from last year into this year um what do you think you and and your team wants to do differently this year it could be prep it could be in game out of game however you see fit or do you think it's ideal just copy and paste the formula from last year um and apply it to season 10. I think it would be a bit naive to try and copy and paste the formula. Um, I think last weekend just basically showed that you, there is a new way to play the game or yeah. potential way to play the game correctly. Uh, but going into this year, I think I think it was mainly me who kind of let the team down in terms of being flexible with picks. Going into Worlds, Amaterasu was first pick, first ban by every single team, and I just didn't play it. Um, even... Firth, was it spring split season nine when there was the hunter solo meta uh and scrims i didn't really try it either but i think i was kind of b- b- scrim biased because <laughs> we did beat it a lot we did beat adc solo a lot so i kind of just yeah. thought it wasn't that good um so yeah i think in terms of, for me personally probably just be more flexible you know stop played hebo solo this weekend or last weekend so um i think just being flexible in terms of being able to play carry meta if a carry meta comes out or tank meta or you know any meta that comes solo i just want to make sure that i'm capable of playing it you're gonna have to contest sod on that hebo next (laughs) getting the script that team played hebo like six times over the course of eight games or something ridiculous yeah we did realize in the mid set that we're like yeah guys i think he was kind of the best (laughs) guy let's just was i don't know if it was i don't know if it was twig or Laz. It might have been against the Dragons. It must have been against the Dragons. Um, Sot hit, I think, Laz for like 2K with <laughs> Evo Alt or something yeah, 2. like that. 2.2K late game. It's like yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. Um, Variety, going into Season 10 now, you, you've done the thing. You've won Worlds. You've won MVP. Do you feel like you have a weight off in in your competitive mindset now that, that you've been able to do it? Or do you feel like you've now been reinvigorated to – go and do it again with me or harry i said variety and looked at you genetics yeah, is yeah, <laughs> uh i think it's weird i mean it depends what you mean but i'm not really sure you mean by that um, I, guess, I guess for me now like for, if in my opinion it's like now that i've won once i don't every, a lot of people have won once a lot of people that are bad have won once that's that isn't that's <laughs> sure. not good like um for what's me, the motivation now i want to win three times three. i'm can i just call this guy real quick please if i was a multi-role prodigy like this guy and I won twice back to back on two different roles. The fact he hasn't gone for a third role, a third year That's in the That's what row, I'm saying. That is criminal. What do we think, Yark? That Yark, is crazy. What do you think if you had to win worlds on a different role? You Not could support. play a worlds, Not ca- worlds caliber role. Not within this team. Say you had to join a different team. What role do you think you would you would best be able? Not solo, not AD carry. So right now, jungle mid support. I think probably mid. Yeah. Yeah, and th- that guy is saying that, but the year is not over, so every- anything <laughs> Listen, here through words uh, can happen, so... Until I'm retired, this guy's not winning in support, I'll tell you that right now. But no, he should have uh, known that. I, I told him as well, I said, like, come on, man. I, I don't know, for, for me, that's just, like, crazy, like, especially if he's that good as well. I agree. Roles. Like, I mean, I'm just a fraud, I'm just good at one role, and I, I, can't, I can't hit anything, my relics are terrible, but he can do it all, so... Yark, is there a motivation there? Win worlds on every single role in the game? 
You're going to be playing? Not really. But no. for example, <laughs> <laughs> then it's just more like a consistency, consistency thing that yeah. just, just trying to, like, just like ego challenge me thinking that uh, I can maybe play other roles when maybe sometimes there is a player that have been playing that role like their whole life, you know. So you just want to be able to maybe play one or two, and if maybe the situation needs me to, mm -hmm. maybe I will give it a try. It's not like me, you're trying to, <laughs> to think that I Here's can't thing. play anything. You know? I think it speaks volumes to, to your ability and people's confidence in your abilities that like, I think you could do it, you know? Like you did it in Seoul, you did it in carry. I could see you getting it done in mid. Uh, just a hyper flexible player, um, and it's a lot of fun to watch. Uh, let's talk a bit about phase one and the way these divisions broke down uh, and then we can can round things up here because it is a bit of a, a unique look at how we've we've shifted things around in, in the past year what we've done double round robin and um, everyone plays each other a couple of times and that's how the standings break down um, Oni Warriors send you guys over to order division the rest of the divisions break down uh, in that way uh, which division do you guys think most difficult um, everyone plays their own division twice do you feel like the order side is going to end up being more competitive by the end of phase one mm, maybe for the bottom three teams in there between them and you're not in that bottom no. three no, no. <laughs> then the chaos division is probably the hardest i think lads probably struggled quite a lot to be honest i think they're just over that experience and we've seen what only warriors can do this weekend or last weekend and yep. uh, in our terms of our group we just have, you know, a, a new team, Eldritch Hounds. I think they have, they have good players. They can. Yeah, do what's well. your read on them? Traditionally, qualifier teams haven't done the best. We've had, you know, Scarabs and Valks having real tough times the last couple of years. Do uh, you think the Hounds can kind of break that that mold? Uh, maybe they do. Just have Coast. I think he's probably. <laughs> I think he's a really sick ADC. Mm -hmm. And then they just have players like Benny Q and Oath and Ducky who kind of kind of have like one pop-off game every every so often but i think the hounds are kind of just coast or bust coast carry or bust do you think that team tries to play a similar game to what the oni warriors do but maybe not as well or or is it a bit different you think it's a bit different i'd say, I'd say oath plays a bit like a ranked player yeah um coast also, maybe a bit like a rank play, he kind of shows a bit of disrespect in lane. You know, he, he takes that. <laughs> yeah. I think you've seen it against when they played J Dragons and they took a game of them, and he just had um, a vote on the tower, just trading all the time. Vote, I think. Yeah, this weekend. yeah. So I think it's. Mm. I wouldn't really say they've kind of got. I don't, you can't really figure out a play style yet. Obviously, you've no, got, no, it's early. You have to get here. comfortable with your players and stuff. Um, I do think Gladiators will be better than Hounds. I think you know. By really? If they play each other, I, yeah. I think they have to be. Okay. I don't know. I think I think I, I agree with Harry. Like I think coast or bust for them. I have to, have to mention as well. If Jordan did retire, I did jokingly say that Yark should go mid and we should pick up Coast ADC. That'd be a nasty team, and and again, I think I would <laughs> I would value Yark in yeah. in but just the he's same. Too, he's too scared. So though the BMT and and I the, we're we're jumping all over the place now. But now that we've brought him up, because we haven't talked about him much today, I think has been one of the more underappreciated mid laners in in the last few years of, of the SPL. Just in, in consistency levels, everyone has good games and bad games. Um, but I feel like BMT for you guys has been such a cornerstone of, um, I don't want to use the word consistency again, but maybe consistency for this team. Uh, do you get the feeling that he's a bit underrated, properly rated? I, you know, I don't know how inflated his ego gets, so you can choose your words carefully here. Um, but how essential has, has BMT been to the success of this Kings team? Probably more than you'd think. Not in terms of just being a solid carry player, playing Tim and Merlin, whatever, yeah. just pumping damage. I'd say in terms of being able to adapt to the meta, you know, he's capable of playing Hunter's mid. When set mid was meta, he was playing set mid. Uh, I think he's probably the most versatile mid in terms of being able to play every type of god. Um, in terms of being underrated, overrated, I think in the SBL between players themselves, mm -hmm. I think he's rated as he should be. You know, everyone just rates him as a top top mid. Yep. In terms of the community, I think the, they they just blow smoke up his ass. They need to relax a bit. <laughs> so uh, overrated? No, properly rated, but by the pros. Yeah. But chill out, community, right? Yeah. <laughs> to give it a break. Um, let's and it's way too early. I know, and and I'll admit that. But it's it's a fun, I think, thought experiment. If 
fast forward towards the end of the year. Um, are you guys visualizing? Obviously, you're going to put yourselves up top. Um, are you visualizing Kings v. Oni Warriors being a potential tournament finals type battle over uh, the events that we have this year? Um, maybe some dark horses uh, in your mind, teams that underperformed at this tournament, but you expect to be better than what we've seen. I'm thinking Ferryman, Ravens, teams like that. Um, what are some teams you think maybe you expect to be top dogs by the end of the year and some teams that maybe didn't show their best stuff this past weekend? So I'd say Leviathans haven't even scrimmed of Shinto yet. So That's true. It's the, really hard the goat to, Gabe was in here. Yeah, it's really hard <laughs> to get an idea of how good Leviathans actually are because well, they haven't played with Shinto. So I think they should be a top three, top four team, but maybe he comes back and they don't mesh well or whatever. You never know. Yeah. I think with the Warriors, I don't think they'll be able to keep up the strong performances consistently throughout the year. I think they'll fluctuate up and down quite a bit. Uh, What's well. the ferryman read? I haven't practiced against them that much. Don't really know right now. That's our team to lock down yeah. because that's a team that core has found its way to the, the finals, what, two years in a row, right? But like during the regular season, they're like mid table and, and don't really pop off all that consistent consistently. So I feel like I have a very hard time setting expectations for that team. Yeah, I don't even know to be honest. They've got picks and bands though. I think yeah. that's the thing for me is I think like that's why I always think like Leviathan's us and Maybe Ferryman will always be like good teams at tournaments because we just win drafts super hard. Right. Um, I think Warriors, like I said before, I said like if Warriors, if we're playing 95% of how we can play, we'll be Warriors every day. But it's hard to play that time. Well, then I think they'll beat everyone. However, I do think it'll be us Leviathans, top two. Um, I just think when it comes down to tournaments, the game's way slower. Yeah. People punish things way harder. Um, as the map gets more complex, I assume, throughout the year, and then teams play front to back, I think Ronnie makes the least mistakes out of any support positioning wise um which i think helps them as well and steve's obviously very safe too right i just think that's always going to favor a team like that when it gets to big events yeah watch out for your shutdown gold this year we've seen some uh yeah. some some nutty swings you in see scrims. <laughs> sometimes you get two shutdowns and a full and five chess procs then you get five thousand gold in about two seconds we love that yep. do we maybe i like it we'll decide if we like it yeah we, we like it if we're behind mm -hmm. um all right, we're, we're kind of getting towards the end of this interview here, fellas. Um, I've been doing this with the with the teams over the course of this weekend. If you had one word to describe the Camelot Kings, what would it be? Whether it's for season 10, world champs, however you want to take that one word for the, your play style, expectations, one word for the Camelot Kings. Washed. <laughs> oh, no. That was my word, too. Unlucky, double washed. Are you going triple washed, Eric? Uh, I was going with clowns, but I don't know anymore. Maybe wash too. Maybe, is this the key to the Kings? You guys set expectations for everyone else hyper low, and then you just blow them out of the water. You pretend to be washed, and then you just own them. Is that the idea? Mm, you no, you reel them in. You, you, you no, dangle no, the bait. That'd be really hard to wash, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> you, honestly, you should sit in a week of scrims of the Kings, and you'll be like... How did they win worlds? Yeah, okay, so if, if Biggie was in here and I asked Biggie what would he like to change about the team this oh, year, what do you think he would five, say? All five players. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, just one worlds with the boys? Yeah, he wants to five, change all everyone? All five players, seriously. I mean, it's, I don't know, it's weird. I mean, I, we'll warm it up. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll warm up until, let's say, worlds, and then we'll be back. Okay. The you thing is, wine, I've, I've always been very hypocritical of like Steve, it's like, Oh yeah, I'm gonna just for one world. I'm gonna relax all next world. I've always kind of hated that sentiment. Yeah. So I, I would be hypocritical to use that as an excuse. We are just bad right now compared to how we were at Worlds, and uh, we need to step it up. You know. I think it is unironically just warming up, getting back into the swing of things. So realistically, it's not been that long since we started scrimming again. Yeah. It was. Yeah. We started scrimming two weeks before the tournament, right? Yeah. So it's what. Just finished three weeks worth of scrims. Yeah, maybe going like close to a month. Mm. So you know. But that happens, you know, in in. Traditional sports even happened with the Leviathans a bit last year. After winning the big one, the whole the whole thing, Super Bowl, whatever it might be, Worlds, there tends to be some wind-up time even for the teams that remain unchanged. Yeah. Um, Especially when there's a big, there's obviously the season 10 map and patch itself. Yeah, and then God. there's another big patch about yeah, huge patch. healing and all that other stuff. So, you know, halfway through our scrims, 
like we after one week of scrims, we had to reevaluate everything. Everything can go again. Yep. So I think Genetics now that we've got the time, we'll come back. Get happy with Aphrodite in Hell, right? Nox. I played Aphrodite as well as like three years ago. Yeah. I was playing from Ping. I think it was, was right. She, was she better then or now? Oh, she's way better now. She's silly now. If if Aphrodite gets locked in by the Kings, should I expect it to go to BMT or Genetics? <laughs> not going to Jordan. Or Variety in the not, Soul Lane. It's going to me or Harry. Yeah. I mean, it's weird because I, I actually think the character's a little bit overrated right now. I think she does some things really well, but mm -hmm. she's very narrow focused at what she does well, and she's terrible at everything else. I mean, I mean we did one banner against Warriors a single time. Yeah, so. I mean, I, I was going to play a game five if it, if it came up. Um, <laughs> I think she's like really good. She makes one person a raid boss, but she That's just true. completely leaves the other three people in the dust. Right. Um, it's low pressure as well. She's too. also, you're basically playing 4v5 for the first 15, 20 minutes yeah. of the game. I mean, I've, I've played it before with my, when I was on a team, I played with Angry. Well, I used to play Aphrodite yep. with him. And there was a meta against the, um, uh, you know, the Hex Mambo team yep. of them, but two years ago. There was Bell like a meta. Yeah, Bell was slap. A, Bell slap. There was a meta in SEC. <laughs> name. There was a meta in SEC where on I think I, I'm, I'm not lying here. The meta was Chango Ra Afro Hell top four, and I think we like you had to ban all four. Yeah, that sounds like. But Bell we, they picked like Ra, and we picked Hell Aphrodite mid support, and that was the meta from like two years ago. So I'm used to it. I mean, I've played that. Right. What a dream. Yeah, but they are they are more balanced though. Even they've off, off, off of a few more number tweaks. Like the meta, the game will be in a, in a lot healthier balance. Even in assault and stuff, I love that. I love yep. it way more. Yeah, I know that uh, team's got a lot of stuff cooking. I, you know, I'm good friends with Agro, but I'm so left out of, as I should be. I don't know anything about balance and all that, but I hear some ideas of, of things coming down the pipeline. Uh, well, Kings, I appreciate you guys sitting down with me. Congrats on the World's Run. It was really fun kind of recapping that because I don't think we got to really sit down and, and talk much with you guys about it, but um, a crazy journey. Looking forward to the what did you say? Clowns, wash, wash, clowns, uh, run back on, on Worlds this year um, and expecting big things. That's Variety. That's Yark. That's Genetics. I'm Dolson. Thanks to the fans, Advanced GG, all you guys. Stay tuned for Camelot Kings and their games this year. Catch you later. Bye. Mwah.